Here are clear, simple test-taking strategies you can use to excel on math and science exams from now on. I guarantee it. These techniques will work anytime you have to deal with numerical or math calculations. Hi, your favorite Uncle Matt back with you to let you know that this is not about study tips or test preparation. Rather, I'm going to give you eight proven ideas you can use during any STEM subject tests. Even better, they can be used on both standardized exams as well as the ones prepared by your instructor. Some of these tactics are so simple that they might seem obvious. It would be easy but foolish to discount their value. Be sure to stay tuned to the end because after these eight tips, I've got two surprise bonus tips for you. Number one, pay attention to the little details. Easily, one of the biggest causes for students getting wrong answers is that they were careless in the way they wrote information down on the paper. Here are some examples and solutions. Write neatly. Don't make your zeros look like sixes, or your threes look like eights, or make a seven look like a one, or a nine look like a four. Watch your columns. Be sure to keep your calculations in neat columns so you don't make simple errors that could be easily avoided. Copy correctly. Sometimes you'll have to copy parts of a problem to paper. Be sure you've done it accurately. Go back and check to make sure you've got all the numbers and that you haven't transposed any digits and that you've written the right numbers. Number two, use every allowable tool. It's weird. We've seen some students think that it's somehow a sign of weakness or inferiority to use every tool that's allowed. If you're able to use a calculator or your book or a computer, then do it. When using a calculator, remember that it's easy to enter a wrong number or transpose some digits. So be sure to do it carefully. Three, estimate your answer first. Often, the test giver will supply two possible answers that look very similar and a couple that are wildly different. Even though the actual numerals are similar, perhaps the decimal point is placed between the wrong digits. If at all possible, estimate your answer and then pick the one closest to it. You'll usually be correct and you'll have saved time versus doing all the long calculations. Number four eliminate the obvious. Test creators may try to trick you with answers that use the wrong units of measurement compared to what's being asked for. Ounces versus pounds, inches versus millimeters, minutes versus seconds, and so on. Eliminate any answers that look highly unlikely after using your tactic of estimating as previously stated. Number five, Pay closer attention to charts and graphs. Don't assume you understand a graph or a chart simply because it looks familiar. Be sure of what you're looking at. Pay attention to the values that are being used. Take the extra moment you need to really look at what's in front of you. Number six, answer what's actually being asked. Are you required to show your work? If it's a multi-part question, did you answer everything? Does your answer use the correct units of measurement? For example, do they want the answer in Kelvin, Celsius, or Fahrenheit? Do they want pints or liters? Number seven, ask yourself clearer questions. If you are completely stumped on a question, approach it differently than the others. What about that problem has you stumped? Can you simplify it? Sometimes substituting other values or numbers can bring you more clarity. For example, try using whole numbers instead of fractions and see if it gives you a way of understanding the process. Perhaps use an example that's different from the specifics given in that problem. Number eight, look for clues in other test questions. Reread and think of other problems in the test. Are there any clues available to be used from them? Oftentimes, you will see parts of the answer in the questions or in the answer choices from other exam questions. All right, so there you have your eight strategies. Now, I promised you two bonuses. The first one, 
Use good time management. If you're struggling to come up with an answer, don't spend too much time on it. Otherwise, you may not have time to answer the ones that are easier for you. Come back to it later. Let your subconscious mind work on it while you go on to the other test questions. Go back to the ones you struggled with after answering the other questions. And your second bonus, use positive self-talk. I've addressed this with a lot more detail in other videos before. The worst thing you can say to yourself is, I can't remember. That sends the wrong message to your subconscious. Instead, use this exact phrase. It will come to me in a moment. After you say that to yourself, take a deep breath and let it go. Move on to the next question. Frequently, you'll find that the answer will pop into your head. Use these 10 proven strategies and you'll amaze yourself with just how well you do on your math and science tests. Even though some of these tips may seem obvious, I'm frequently amazed at how sometimes students will ignore them. If you want top grades and to enjoy more success, use these strategies. Next, be sure to check out these other videos that are being recommended to you. YouTube has selected them just for you. And I'll look forward to seeing you on my other videos soon.